can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? Oak House Church brings to you the word of life which is able to build you up and offer you an inheritance among all those that are sanctified. Sit back and listen, and may your life become more like that of Christ as you encounter His Word. God bless you. Interesting. But before then, I want to say that what I've been saying over time, the difference between one Christian from another Christian, the difference between a believer and another believer, the difference between one brother, even if you are twins, the difference is in number one, what you know. It is what you know and what you do with what you know that makes the difference. It is about what you know and what you do with what you know. That is what makes the difference. That is the difference why someone, a believer in Christ, is different from another believer in Christ. The difference between you is not because you have a well-paid job. That is a lie. That's not true. There is no element of truth in it. That's we are talking about the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, in God's own kingdom, what makes you different from another person? What makes you a better person, a more robust and more fruitful and more productive Christian is based on the level of the knowledge that you have and what you do with that knowledge that you have. If you are ignorant of God's, of the knowledge of God and his word, you will be deficient in everything that has to do with God and his kingdom. And even if you know if you have the knowledge and then you do nothing with that knowledge that you have, you will end up being a frustrated human being though you are born again. Although you are a member of God's family. Although you are a member of the kingdom of God. But because you fail to do in the first place God says in the book of Hosea, in chapter 4, verse 6, he said, My people are destroyed because they don't have knowledge. Have you seen it? Number two, in James chapter 1, in 25, he said, Do not be the hearer of the word. I said, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein and be not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man is a blessed man. Two things the knowledge and what you do with the knowledge that you have, putting the knowledge into practice having the knowledge and putting it into practice. That is what makes the difference. Nothing more, nothing less. If you are, for example, struggling and you are poor and you are a destitute and you are born again and you are a member of God's family, the reason why you are there like that is because of lack of knowledge. Or because you have the knowledge and you do nothing about it. And you just let it slip. That's just the difference. So that brings me to the next thing. About what you do. More especially when you come into the presence of God. When you come into the house of God. 
because that is where the knowledge of God is taught. So if you are not interested in paying deep and great attention to acquire that knowledge, if you are not interested in gaining that knowledge, then it is better you stay back in your home because faith, the Bible tells us, Without faith, you cannot please God. And faith comes by hearing the word of God. And that word, you refuse to hear it, or you play with it. You don't have a future. You don't have hope. No matter how many times somebody pray for you. No matter how many years they spend fasting and praying over your life. The prayer and the fasting will be for you to come to a place of the knowledge. It's for you to... With the other word of God, nothing is happening. The Bible talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So you can't win any battle, any spiritual battle outside of the word of God that you know. So that is very important. The knowledge of God's word and what you do with the knowledge of God is what makes you a makes you different from the rest of the people. When you hear the word that says they that know their God in the last day, they are the one that will be strong and do exploit. It is on the basis of knowing God and his word and obedience to the word of God that you have. It doesn't come by fasting and prayers. It doesn't come by speaking in tongues. It doesn't come by having dreams and visions and making prophecies and prophesying and all that. Thank God for all those things. But after you have prophesied, after you have seen visions, after you have dreamed dreams, after you have spoken in tongues, what do you do with God's word? Amen. <clears throat> One thing that I have found out, I discovered, and that gladdens my heart a lot, is that it is only in the house of God, it is only in the kingdom of God, it is only in the family of God that no matter how poor, no matter how destitute you are, no matter how down and out you are. I don't know what is the worst word to use. No matter how poverty stricken you are as a person, the moment you come into the kingdom of God and you are genuinely saved, You have arrived. You do hear what I say? No matter how poor, no matter how destitute, no matter how frustrated you are, you come into the house of God, you come into the kingdom of God, you become born again genuinely. You are made. You have arrived. Amen. Amen. Today I want to talk to us. We can we stop distractions, please. Those that are without, let them stay outside the camp. Those that are inside the camp, mind the camp. Amen. 
I want to talk to us about something that is very, very, very interesting. It's about your inheritance. It is the word inheritance. Inheritance, inheritance, inheritance. Many a times we hear the word inheritance and uh, it flies over our head. Many a times we, don't, we can't relate with it. Many a times we wonder, so inheritance and so what? As Christians, we have what the Bible calls inheritance. Listen very carefully because what I'm, uh, what I'm going to say is going to disturb a lot of you. I'm very, very certain about it. I am 100% sure it will disturb a lot of you. But I'm going to show you from the Bible. It will disturb you. It will give you sleepless night beyond today. We have inheritance in Christ. Just like in the natural. You will wish that your father maybe is a Denuga or maybe he's a Dangote or maybe he's a, all these rich great men. How I wish I was born into that family. Because when you see them, they are some of them are born into kingship. Some of them are prince. You say they come from royal families and all of, just like you hear about Charles Prince. And the whole lot. So you wish your father is rich. True or false? You won't be where you are today. And when you look at them, you envy them. And sometimes you wonder why you were not born. Why you were an African? Why am I not a white man to be an American or a British person? But you see, no one chooses the country where you are going to come from. You don't have the right to choose it. No one chooses who is going to be your father, who is going to be your mother. Nobody chooses who is going to be your parents. Nobody chooses whether I'm going to be Hausa, I'm going to be Yoruba, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. You don't have that right. So you have people who have been born in a manger or worse than a manger. People who were born under the bridge. So they don't have anything going for them. And then you see someone who was born with a golden spoon in his mouth. When he was coming out, you see gold spoon. Everything about that person is made. Is God unfair? The answer is capital no. Now, the moment, please, the moment you step into the kingdom of God, I'm going to tell you what happens. There is what the Bible calls inheritance of the saints. And permit me to read maybe one or two scriptures to that effect. In Acts of Apostles chapter 20, in uh, verse 32, it talks about, Now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and then give you an inheritance among all of them that are sanctified. So we have inheritance in 26. In Acts 26, 18, it talks about the same thing. We have inheritance in the, amongst us Christians to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Amen. So what is inheritance? Inheritance. 
when you talk about inheritance, it's um, a legal right of ownership of a property bequeathed unto you upon the death of a person is your legal right of certain amount or quantity of property or estate or whatever committed into your hand is your right is your basic right is non-negotiable you are qualified for it by law by right, by any means. Just like being a citizen of Nigeria, just don't bother, don't, don't worry because of our country. But there are certain basic rights that you are allowed to enjoy. It's your right, it's your privilege. It is, is, is you are legally qualified to enjoy those rights. They are basics. A right to live, the right to live in any part of the country where you want. There is what they call the fundamental human rights, freedom of expression, and all of that. There are basic things that provisions that a country, that the nation in which you are you are born into, you have a, you have access to. In the same way, when you come into the kingdom of God, there are there are basic rights and privileges that are meant for you and I. And those rights and privilege, those inheritances, mind boggling. You cannot exhaust it even in this, your generation upon your generation upon your generation will not be able to finish it. But there is a problem. That is why I actually want to solve a problem for some of us. Because what happens is that we live by the rivers and then we begin to wash our hands with spittle. We live in the midst of abundance and yet we suffer lack and scarcity. That is why we said, you've got to find out what is your right, what are those inheritance that you have in Christ. If you don't have the knowledge of it, if you don't know what they are, you can't take advantage of them. Even when you do know, some of us we know, but we don't do anything about it because of our spiritual laziness. Now, when we talk about inheritance, there are two folds of inheritance. The inheritance is of two folds. If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible says that godliness, exercise yourself, rather, for bodily exercise, profited little. He said, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life. Promise of what? Of the life that is what? When? And two. The promise of this life. Not when you get to heaven. And then there is one that is waiting for you when you get to heaven. So on both sides, you are covered. So we have inheritance in this life. We have inheritance in the life to come. Say with me, I have inheritance. In this life. And in the life to come. I have inheritance. Say with me, I have legal rights, have legal rights. Of, ownership of ownership of properties, of properties. bequeathed to me bequeathed. by Jesus Christ. I have rights. 
they are yours. Okay, so the promise in this life, our inheritance in this life, and inheritance in the life to come. What are those inheritance we have in this life? What are they? What is your, what, what's your inheritance in this life? Yes, who knows? It's also Bible study. Who knows? What are your inheritance? Okay, let me not just, before you hear the one that. The Bible says in the book of 1 John, 3 John, when he said, I wish above all things that what happened? That you do what? And as your health. You don't know what it means to have a good health. <laughs> you don't know what it means to have a good health. Because when your health, when you don't have good health, what happens? Every other thing in your life comes to abrupt what? End. When your health is destroyed, you don't have life anymore. You become a, to an extent, you become a vegetable. Nothing you can do. One, I'm talking about health, divine health in the kingdom of God. You live and live strong and healthy. And then prosperity. And your prosperity in this life and your prosperity with God, living a righteous and a sanctified holy life. God and everything that pertains to life and godliness, God made them available. He has provided them. They are available. No man, no woman born in the kingdom of God can ever open his or her mouth and make any complaint that you are disadvantaged. You can never be disadvantaged because you have so much. You, there are so much you inherited. And you know, you can't talk about inheritance without being a member of the family. Just like I can't come to your house now when your father is sharing your properties and all of that. He say you're going to give me some. It doesn't happen. It's only members of the family who are born in that family. They are the ones that have the rights. So, we have everything that pertains to this life. They are made available to us by God. They are part of the things that Jesus Christ died for on the cross. So that we can have access to them. So that we can enjoy them. There is inheritance we have in this life. And there is inheritance in this other side of life. Our inheritance in the life to come. You know what they are? Everlasting life. Eternal life. Living in the kingdom of God forever and serving him and reigning with him forever and ever and ever. There are so much. So, if you are a Christian and you are born again, you have the right to enjoy divine health. Divine immunity, protection from, from the attacks of the enemies and all of that is not, you are not going to be prayed. There are things that are basic. There are things that are yours. You don't go fasting and praying for they are your own. They are giving. If you want to travel to Sokoto now, 
you want to relate, relocate to Sokoto, do you need to apply for a visa to go to Sokoto? Do you need to take permission from any president or from any governor or from any uh, law enforcement agency in order for you to go and uh, relocate to Sokoto? Is it, is it possible? Can it be why? Why? I can't hear you. As a citizen, it is your legal right. Do you know that there are rights and privileges that we have in the kingdom of God? That we are begging God. That we are fasting to God. That we are crying. You hear the word I hear a lot is cry out to God. What they are crying out to God, I don't know. You hear it a lot of time, maybe many places. You cry out. What am I crying out? What has been given to you? The problem is that we don't know. We, the problem is that we don't know that this is our right, that we have been given this. You have to come to know. And when you know that, the, your prayer will change. The way you make your prayer. Because you can be making prayers of unbelief. Prayers of unbelief. And think. And you will think that you are, you are Jim Jim. You know, you are, you, are shaking, you are shaking the whole place. Meanwhile, it is prayer of unbelief and, and all sort that you are doing. And at the end of the day, you have little or nothing to show for it. Anything that is your right. You don't need to beg for it. And guess what? God does not keep those things away from you. He doesn't. The one that tries to fight to discourage you and to distract you is the enemy. They are the Bible, what the Bible, what the Bible calls the children's bread. A young lady came to Jesus Christ for healing, and Jesus said, I can't take the children's bread and give them to the dog. These are children's bread, healing, divine health, enjoying health. No sickness, no disease, no frailty in your life, in your body and all of that. Strong. He promised you because in the kingdom of God, there is no feeble person. Even in the Old Testament, the Bible says, why these guys were moving from, wilderness to, uh, from the wilderness to the promised land? He said, not one man was feeble. Everyone, no one was sick. No one was weak. Not one person. In the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant. And nobody lacked. And God made provision for every one of them. He gave them victory. In every area. We have so much inheritance in the kingdom of God. That nobody will ever say that he's disadvantaged. That nobody will ever say that God is unfair. Because I hear it a lot. How that God has been unfair. How that God did this one. And a mortal man will open his or her mouth. And especially women. They are the ones who come from their mouth a lot. That God disappointed her. And God did this. And God, how do you shape in your, how do you shape your mouth to say it? How, how, how that God <laughs> is unthinkable. I will not be, part, I, I, as a matter of fact, I didn't hear it. I wouldn't want to hear such things at all. Because it's an abomination to hear. I'm going to give you one or two or three or four as the case may be depending on the time what you must do remember what I say remember how I started it is the knowledge that you have and what you do with the knowledge that you have that makes the difference in your life I've been able to establish that every one of us, if you're 
a Christian, you have an inheritance in Christ. Inheritance both in this life and also in the life to come. Give me Mark chapter 10, verse 29. Let me try also to rub it in. Mark chapter 10, 29. Mark 10, 29. Mark, the gospel of Mark. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that had left house or brethren or sister or father, or mother or wife or children, or land for my sake and the gospel. Verse 30. But it shall receive works. How many fold? When? When? In this life. He shall receive an hundredfold in this time. What are they? You're going to get houses. You're going to have brethren. You're going to have sisters. You're going to have mothers. You're going to have children. You're going to have lands with persecution, of course, because the more you have people, the more you have abundance and all of that, the more the mouth that will eat it will come. And they will come with all sorts. Some will be pulling you from the back. Some will be... And in the world to come, what? We have inheritance on both sides of life. Land. Houses. Brethren. Mothers. Children. Persecutions. All of them come together. It's your portion. Say it's my portion. Don't remove persecution, no. Say persecution now is my portion. You don't want to say it. Okay. See it. Because they will abuse you. They will lie against you. They will steal, they will try to steal it from you. Now, the first thing that you must make sure, if you want to enjoy this, by the way, what does it mean you shall receive an hundredfold in this time? Houses. What does it mean to receive houses? That you're going to have houses all over the country and abroad. Is that what he's talking about? So what is he talking about? Because if I, for example, now if I leave Lagos now and I say I'm going to Ibadan, I have people whom we have reached out to. They are even begging us to come to Ibadan. The other time, say, please, anytime you come to Ibadan, anytime, just come. My house is open. Everywhere is open. You go to the north, to the center. You go to the south, the center. You are not looking for where to live, where to go to, where to sleep. When other people will travel and they are looking for money to pay for hotel bills and all of that, you have one free. And they provide you with everything that you need. They will provide the vehicle to take you wherever you are and wherever you want to go and bring you back. And when you finish, they will even pay your ticket and all of that and you come back. You are, if you have physical houses, for example, you have physical houses in uh, Dubai, you have in South Africa, you have in Jamaica, you have in uh, Dublin, you have in uh, America, you have in um, uh, Canada. We, how many of them? So every month, you are going to be traveling from one country to another in order to live in those houses. Is that? And then you are going to be paying bills to maintain that house and the taxes you are going to be paying and all of that. Who, God is, that is not what God is talking about. Do you understand the implication of you are going to have houses? 
And then talking about brethren and sisters and mothers and children, you know what it means. How many brothers do I have? All the men in this house. If I need money now, and all I need to do is I say, Israel, please. Just 5,000, 10,000, 20,000. Even if you don't have it, you go and borrow. Two of us, Israel. I have brethren. I have brothers all over, everywhere. Physically speaking, how many brothers do I have? You know, we are a football team in my family. We are 11. Eight boys and five girls. I am the seventh one. So I'm just limited. 11 football team. But beyond that now, look at the, all the brethren that I have everywhere. I have mothers. I have sisters. I have brothers. I have all sorts. More than you can imagine or think about. And you know, there is an adage in our place that says, the one that have people is more than the one that has money. Because if I have people, many people, I have many, I have much money. Okay? Because if I want to raise 100 million naira now, I want to do whatever. All I need to do is I will reach out to my brethren. I say, please, I have a problem. My need is 100 million. And they will share it among themselves. And you see those who are going to bring the liquid gas and those who are going to bring other things that are going, everything that you, you just, because that is how it is. That's what Jesus Christ is talking about here. In this life, you will not lack anything in this life. He said, the Lord is your shepherd. You shall not do what? Lack. You have inheritance in this life. I want you to know that. I want you to see it. I want you to know it and believe it first. You have inheritance. You are not disadvantaged. It doesn't matter where, whether you are living under the bridge, whether you don't have any job, whether you are jobless and all of that. No, there is no jobless man in the kingdom of God. No jobless man in God's family. No, if you are jobless, it's because you choose to be jobless. It's a choice. If you are frustrated, it means you choose to be. No man is disadvantaged. Like I said, I'm going to give you practical steps or things you must. Number one, inheritance only comes to members of the family. Inheritance does not go outside the members of the family. So you must belong to Jesus Christ. You must be a member of his family. You must be born again. Truly and genuinely born. Certified. Born again. In Romans chapter 8 verse 9 he says, If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, you don't belong to him. So you must, but ye are not in the flesh but in the spirit. So be that, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is what? None of his. You cannot partake of this inheritance. It will not come to you. No matter how you try. You must belong to God's family. And belonging to God's family means you must have the spirit of Christ in you. In other words, you must be born again. You know, I told you I'm going to say something that will disturb you. Tighten your belt well. 
<coughs> and I will give you a scripture for this one. Our problem, part of our major problem in this kingdom of God, this thing that, because we don't understand what it means, we don't understand what has happened. We don't understand the meaning of the word. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are what? And he said, behold. What is the meaning of the word behold? Watch, look, see. All things have become new, not old. But do you know that new wine must be contained in a new wine skin? The things that are old must be done away with. You can't carry them into the new kingdom that you have belonged, you have come into. An attempt to bring it into the new kingdom where you belong now, it's gonna, it will work against you. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. And I'm going to show you from the scriptures. Give me John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13. John chapter 1 12. <clears throat> I just want to lay the foundation before I drop what I want to say. But as many as have received him, what happened? To them he gave, gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13 which we are born not of the blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of who? Romans chapter 11, 16 For if the first fruit be holy who is our first fruit? If the first fruit be holy, the lump is also what? <clears throat> and if, please now, and if the root be holy, so are what? Verse 17. <clears throat> and if some of the branches be broken off, and you being a wild olive tree, we are what? Grafted in among them and with them partakers of the roots and fatness of the olive tree. I want to tell you what, it, I want to show you. How many of you know about grafting? What do you do in grafting is that you go to a particular orange tree, for example. You break off the branch. Okay. And then you took it to maybe a tangerine orange tree. You want to graft in, okay? You make an incision there. They know how they do it and all of that. And they put that branch in. There's something where they do it. And from that day onwards, everything that came from this other one is gone. It's going to take the life of this new tangerine tree. That's the life he's going to take now. Everything that is coming from this other one is gone. If any man is in Christ, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. An attempt to carry this thing and bring it into the kingdom. You have an inheritance and this inheritance you have in the kingdom is much more than anything you can imagine. Don't bring anything from the world and to add to it, to contaminate it. You've got to say bye bye to them. Even your natural inheritance. 
I'm saying even your natural inheritance. You inherited certain things from your father, from your mother, and all of that. And you think that is what God is interested in in the kingdom. You are making a very big mistake. It will not work. It will be a hindrance to you in your life. I've started. Don't worry, I will give you examples. Even those of you who say you are the firstborn, my inheritance with my father, you inherited this, you inherited that, and that is you, you fight and you carry it, and you're a Christian and you come. It won't work. Because anything that God, you are coming into the kingdom of God is a brand new world. They don't need anything from that kingdom. They don't, because what you are inherited, he said, you, because you are carrying the gene of the fallen nature from your parents and all of that, and everything that comes from it, they are all defiled. You can't bring them into the, because you see, when we talk about Christianity, when we talk about being born again, when we talk about the kingdom where we have come into, we still relate it with the natural. We still want to make, make you know, mix it up and mangle it up with the things from the world. They have to stay. I start, number one, look at the life of Abraham. Abraham was the firstborn. He was born, his father was Terah. They had, Terah had three children, Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. He was the firstborn. What did God say to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1? He said, leave. Your father's house, your mother's house, leave your property, leave your land, leave everything that you have and all of that, abandon them and come. I will give you a better future because you have a new inheritance in the kingdom. True or false? Number two. I'll show you both in the New Testament. <clears throat> Look at Moses. He was a prince. Is he not? Heir to the throne. What happened? Cut off. You know some of you who are saying, um, I'm a, I have a royal blood in me. What is the royal blood? Royal blood of a defiled, mundane blood that is rejected. You can't bring it into the kingdom of God. You can't bring that thing into the kingdom. It doesn't work. God does not make use of it. Anything that you, bro you borrow from the world and bring it, you can't function in the kingdom of God. God will cut it off. He will severe it, take it away. You have a, if you are coming into the kingdom of God, a brand new person, a brand new, what is it that you are lacking in this kingdom? Everything that pertains to life and godliness is made available. What do you need from there? You need to carry the car. You need to carry the houses. You need to carry the properties and all of that. And you carry it. It will not work. Hebrew chapter 11, verse 16. Hebrew eleven twenty four. Hebrews eleven twenty four. 24. <clears throat> By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called what? Why didn't he take his royal stand. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. He cut it off. You know what Peter said? Peter was a fisherman. Andrew was a fisherman. All the disciples, they had a business they were going doing. Some of them were successful. When they come in contact with Jesus, I want to follow him. What did Peter say in Mark chapter 10 verse 28? He said, we have abandoned everything. Just like Abraham, you must leave them. So,
so that you can enjoy this new inheritance you have in Christ. If you don't, you will not. Just like the same way, anything in the kingdom of God you want to enjoy, you must say bye-bye to the old. That's why he said, the man should leave his father and you leave your mother and cleave to your wife and the two shall become one. If you don't leave them, if you don't say bye-bye to them and all of that, you can't enjoy the inheritance of having a good marriage in your life. You won't. If you don't say bye-bye to them, if you don't cut, that's why he said, anyone who does not hate father, mother, brother, sister, and blah, 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 you can't. You must come to a point where you have to severe it. And beginning because God must begin with you afresh. And you have come into a new kingdom where you have everything that you need beyond what you can imagine. But what has been a problem with us is that we are born again now and see we carry a whole lot. We want to carry them. You think it is by doing that you are going to help God. He doesn't want you to touch them. Now look at Jesus Christ. I will give you an example with Jesus Christ. Give me Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who being in the form of God, though taught it robbery not to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation. He let everything go. He was God. He has the authority. He was the one that created the heavens and the earth and everything. And he was coming into the earth to take the nature of man. He had to abandon all those. He had to give them all up. He made of himself of no reputation anymore. He let go. He didn't come into this world as a son of God bragging I am a son of God and all of that I'm God's heir and stuff like that he kept them aside he for, forsook them and then he now came and became he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. He lost everything. He lost everything. Lost even his relationship with the Father. On the cross, he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What happened afterwards? Verse 9. Wherefore, after this, he now came... Because he's the first fruit of this kingdom, of this family. And now God had exalt, highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names. Anyone who has let go, Abraham did. Look at what became of Abraham. Moses did. Look at what became of Moses. Peter and the, all the apostles, they did. Look at what became of them. Jesus did. Look at what became of him. You remember Luke chapter 12, verse 13, uh, verse 15. You remember? <clears throat> Luke chapter 12, verse 14. Oh, let's, let's start from 13. There was something that Jesus was saying. He said, and one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with what? He was interested in the inheritance, his natural inheritance. What did Jesus say to him? He's on the basis of this, he said no. He discouraged him. If you want to follow me, you're going to go. You're going to say bye-bye to all this. If you want to enjoy your inheritance in the kingdom of God, if you want to enjoy it, if you're ready to enjoy it, you must say bye-bye to all this. If that is still what you are bragging on, that is what is still driving you. That is why you are still having, lifting up your head and thinking that you are somewhat. And that's why God will not get your attention. And that is why he said, and, <coughs> excuse me, and 
one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance. With you. It's your own inheritance. So. Is there is no doubt that it doesn't be. Your inheritance is your right. It's your own legal property that is due to you as a result of the fact that you are a member of the family, of that family. So you have the right. There's nothing wrong about it. But what did Jesus say? In relation to this kingdom, you are going to say no. If you are going for it and all of that, stay. That's why I say some of you will not. It will disturb you. And I know it's disturbing a lot of us here now. I also, I have my own natural inheritance in the village. Where my brothers were killing themselves, they are doing all kinds of things and all of that. Over land. I say, take. He said, how can you say that? And all of I said, if you want to give me, give me peacefully. If you want me to come here and be doing X, Y, Z and all of that, I'm not interested. Take, sell, take. Care. I say, every one of them, all, Boboe. Is it not Boboe they call it? Yes. Carry. My one naira you won't see, put inside it to be, I, I won't be part of it. Because I have a new inheritance. And what I, what I have here is much more, there is no basis for comparison. It's knowledge, Joe. It's what you know that makes a difference. Some of you are seeing, some of you sitting down here, you are fighting over your property in the village. And some of you, you are traveling every day, every week, every month to go and uh, negotiate and settle and do all that in the village. That's why... <laughs> It is the way it is. Come out from among them. Leave your father. Leave your mother. Leave your kindred. Leave your land. Leave your country. Come. Look at what Abraham finally became. You can't bring that inheritance into this. The two cannot meet. They are two parallel. They can never cross. And an attempt to mix them and all of that. Frustration. And many of us, we don't know where our problem is coming from. Was it not a young man that asked Jesus, Christ, what does it take in order to enter this kingdom or to gain this eternal life? He told them, he said, I came this love from my youth. He said, however... There is one more thing that is remaining. And what is it? He said, this is your inheritance. You must give them up. Every one of them. And then come. There is a better inheritance in the kingdom. You can't take this one and bring it in here. That is the reason why those of them that are down and out in the society are the choicest material that God is using. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 25. It says, Oh Lord, I don't think I'll be able to finish this today. Because of the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Verse 26. He said, For you see your calling, brethren. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen what? The foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and things which are despised had God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught things that are, verse 29, that no flesh shall glory in his presence. God will not need. Even you, even, even, even the skills and all of that you think you have. You know what he did to Moses? Moses was so skillful. I don't have the time to show you in the book of Exodus. Moses is so skillful in the art of Egyptians. Because that's where he grew up and all of that. And when God now called him, he said, come on. By the time God finished with him, he became a stammerer. 
And God, he said, come, go and he said, Lord, I can't, I can't talk. He said, go and be my spokesman. God, he, Moses said, no. He had a very, God had a very big problem with him. After dealing with him, the man became a Samara. He couldn't, he said, I don't, he said, at a point, God asked Moses, who gave you mouth? Is it not me that gave me mouth? He said, yes, Lord, I know, but I cannot speak again. All that he thought he learned and he knew and all of that, everything. That's why Paul said, I... Everything that I think I knew, I counted them as what? Dunks. If you think because you are so learned and because you are whatever and all of that, you bring it into the cave, it will not work. God doesn't need it. Anything that is of the flesh can never thrive in the presence of God. It can't thrive in the kingdom of God. No! I know about your education and all. Until you bring that, you come the way God will strip you of all those things. You know that you will, when you come into the kingdom, you know that grammar, they don't speak grammar there. It's not where they speak big English. There is not where they do all those things and all of that. It's not. When you meet the, give me, give me Philippians chapter 3 verse 8. <clears throat> verse 8. He said, Yeah, doubtless, I count all things for what? The excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. When he met Christ, when he had an encounter with Jesus Christ, he came into the kingdom. He said, You know who Paul was? Paul was taught by one of the wisest men that lived in his time called Gamaliel. That's why when you talk about, go to verse 6. He said, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, go to verse 5. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, these are the Hebrew. That is, a, these are the. You know, when you say, "Who are the Legosians? Who are the one they call Legosians? Those who, call, you know, they are borrowed Legosians." But when you talk about the the indigenous, the ones that they stock, they they restock. Circumcised the eighth day, he kept every because people who come from this tribe, this is a, these are the genuine original men, people tribe. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews are touching the law. What a Pharisee! Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law. What blameless? Verse seven. But what things were gained to me, those I counted what? When he met Christ. This thing that I'm telling you is one of your greatest problems from entering into your inheritance in this life. They are stumbling block. It will not work. Your education, you bring it here, it will not work. Your qualification, you bring it here, it will not work. God does not need you to do X, Y, Z. There is nothing that you need in this kingdom that he cannot do. And the day you recognize it and begin to say, Lord, I surrender, I give up. I don't want it. Want to say carry over all those whatever. That's why you bring somebody now who is um, maybe the person is a, a bank manager or is he a bank manager or maybe in the world he, you know he, then you bring him into the kingdom and say maybe come and preach with your knowledge and with your education and all of that, when he carries the Bible, he won't he, he'll be turning it upside down. There wouldn't be life in it. And even the same thing that happened to us Christians, even when you think you have studied, <clears throat> you have prayed, you have done all those things, because you glory in the fact that you have studied, you have prayed. 
And then when you finish glory that you have studied and you have prayed and you have done it, you'll come here, you'll be, you'll be talking gibberish. It doesn't happen like that. Not by might. Not by power. It can only be by the Spirit of God. Without it, nothing. Jesus said, without me. Give me Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. The Bible said that we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. These works you are going to do can only be in Christ. It is from the day you come to Christ. Everything that you are doing now takes a new form. Your good works must come from Jesus Christ. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you can't have any good work to offer. In other words, one of the major problems and challenges and hindrances we are having today and what has caused us the struggles over time is because we try to use the arms of the flesh. What the arms of the flesh have given to us. Your father left so much houses and so much money and all of that. And then you are now born again and you think that is what is going to come to bear in the kingdom of God. If God is interested in you and want to use you, he will clean up all those. He will remove all of them. I have always said it. He did it to Jesus Christ, his own son. He did it to Moses. He did it to Abraham. He did it to mention David the same. Joseph the same. Amen. Number two. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us me to be partakers of what? Of the inheritance of the saints. Where? In the light. Your inheritance can only be in the light. When you walk in the light, not in the dark. If you are walking in the dark, you cannot assess your inheritance in the kingdom of God. Because the kingdom where you are now is the kingdom of light. And you must walk in the light. You must not walk in the dark. Anything that is of the flesh will limit you, will hinder you, will deprive you of your inheritance in this life. Even that divine health you are talking about, you will lose it. Even that divine protection, you lose it. Even that divine provisions and all of that, you will lose it. You will not enjoy them. Your inheritance is in the life. So you see, you know, in this thing, nobody is going to sit down and be observing you and then maybe bug your car, bug your house, bug your clothes and all of that. And then, because that is, some women are doing it. They bug their husbands. Even men, they are doing it. Husband, they are doing it. Wife, wife is doing it to the husband. Husband is doing it to the wife. And they will be monitored. The wife will not know that the man bugged everything about her and all that. And he's monitoring anywhere. There is even an app now in your phone that um, when you call, it will show where you are and all of that. So they went out of their way to install it for the purpose of monitoring there. We can do the money, we can, you can monitor the one that you see, the one that you don't see. But you see, in the kingdom of God, there is an unseen eye. There is an eye that is seeing you. 247. Even when you are inside the dark region. You know, before God, there is nothing like day and night. Night is like light to him. There is no light, no 
nothing. So no matter what it is you are doing in the secret, he knows it. He is very, very obvious. You are just lying. You are just deceiving yourself. Why will you continue to lie to yourself and deceive? Thinking that nobody is seeing you. Thinking that you are judging yourself and uh, acquitting yourself and justifying your actions and uh, why you know that what you are doing is wrong because nobody is seeing you there are certain decisions and actions and mannerism and things you believe and you are doing on your own and all of that and you think nobody is seeing you there are laws unseen laws that God has put in place, he watches and observes every single thing that nothing is kept away. Give me Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12. <clears throat> Hebrew 4 12. He said, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing and sunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thought and interest of the heart. Verse 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are what? Naked and open unto who? So continue lying, continue cheating. Continue absenting yourself. Continue with all your reasons, with all the whatever. It's okay. You can lie to me. You can deceive me. You can do all that. I will not know. But there is someone that knows. There is someone that watches you. You see in this kingdom. This kingdom that we are. Is a kingdom of righteousness. There is nothing you can do about it. If I were you, I would just start adjusting. Because no matter what you do, you can decide to stay the way you are and all of that. And nobody can touch you. Nobody can say, you is okay. At the end of the day, look at your life from the beginning to the end. What of those inheritance you don't see them in their lives? You wonder why? It's not the prayer. We spend countless number of time in fasting and praying. The needful you will not do. You know, what I was telling you, my wife was teaching them, talking to them about. <laughs> I said, what we are giving them is, it's just like, um, it's just like you buy chinchin. You know what is chinchin? You now get, um, a one week old baby and give him the chin chin to chew. Chin chin. Okay, you don't know what is chin chin. Okay, meat. You give a one, old, one week old baby meat to chew. Imagine the, imp, the, the not just difficult, it's not going to be difficult, but what? impossible to be able to do it. That's the kind of thing that you are giving them. When you tell someone that you, a wife, you don't have a vision of your own. Your vision is your husband. It's very deep. As simple as it is, it's very deep. So they can't assess it. You know what they do? They will argue it from right, left, and center, inside, out, and up and down, and all of that. When, they, when you finish, look at the lives of those of them. Just look at their lives. Compare them to the kingdom inheritance. You will see nothing. There is nothing you can do against the truth but for the truth there's nothing you can do against the truth but for the truth bury the truth give it three days you come up it's a rock if you fall on it 
you will break into pieces. If you kick it, what will happen? You will stumble. If the rock finally decides to fall on you, powder. So there is nothing. So why? These are the things that I know. So I made up my mind. You see all this water. If you come, whether somebody is observing you, whether somebody is not, you know some of the things we do in the secret that nobody is watching. You know some of the things you say in your heart that nobody is watching or listening to. And then you turn around and wonder why these things are not working. Why am I not enjoying my inheritance in the, in the kingdom? It doesn't work. It is only those who are walking in the light. Your inheritance is in the light. It's not in the dark. You cannot be lying and cheating and manipulating and doing all kinds of whatever and cutting corners and 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 then you expect your own. You expect the Jesus said, if you are not faithful in that which is another man's, you can't enjoy your own. If you're not faithful in that which is little, the bigger things cannot be given to you. So these are the words of Jesus Christ. It's not the word of man. So if you are the kind of a person that doesn't have respect and fear the word of God, you don't tremble at the word of God, so you take it lightly. The word of God, you become profane. Spiritual things, they don't matter. Your inheritance continues struggling. Anything that you see in the word of God, stop giving yourself reasons. Do not forsake the assembling of the brethren as it is in the manner of some. Respect it. First John chapter 1 verse 6. First John chapter 1 verse 6. If we say we have fellowship with him and do what? And walk in darkness, what happens? The truth is not in you. Hello? This is the reason why Prayer, you can't pray, you can't connect. This is the reason why your faith is not working. You are cold, lukewarm, apathy, indifference. We have a meeting by 6 o'clock and by 6 o'clock you see people who are jumping up and down, running around and all of that. When they see Rev or see me driving in and all of that, they run inside the church. You are deceiving. Who are you deceiving? Who are, who are you deceiving? Who are you confusing? Me? Or my Rev? Or whoever? No! Want a clean attack, Kara? In a te gogi, the the child that is eating the 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 akara she was given to go and sell, and you'll be eating it. When you finish, you are going to meet your madam. You are going to give an account. You don't know. Live an honest life. Walk in the light. As we live, as we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Let us walk the talk. Let's walk the talk. Let's talk and then do. Talk now, do. Talk and do. If you say you do it. If you say you are coming, then let your coming be coming. If you say I'm coming to see you by 6 a.m., be sure you are coming by 6 a.m. and see the person. If you say you are not coming, then don't come. Let your word be what? Yeah and amen. So is Christ. Stop. 
Stop giving empty promises. Stop breaking promises. Stop breaking agreement you have with somebody. You are walking in the dark. Be honest. Be truthful. Be genuine. Be real. Because God, nobody, no sane man will carry his estate and give it to somebody that you know that is a fuleful. Somebody that you know that is useless. You carry it and give him. By the time before you turn your back and get to him, he has wasted every single thing. Just like the first Adam did. Wow. I think I may stop at number three because of time. <clears throat> the next thing that you must lay hold on, if you want to enjoy your inheritance, is faith. But hold on, hold on, is faith. But hold on, put your break there. Because when I talk about faith now, you say, ah, we've started again. Put your leg on the brake. Just stop. Tell somebody, hold on. Tell the person beside, because I know what's going on. Tell the person, just calm down. Calm down, calm down. You will see where the problem is. I will point out where the problem is. Just calm down. Are you? What is faith? What is faith? You know, I love things that are very, I love simple, I love sim simplicity, I like simplicity. I don't like things that are complicated. Even in the dressing, even in the dry, whatever it is around, I want things that are very simple. Because I learned it from Jesus Christ. It's a simplicity. What is faith? I want to say what faith is again. Everybody listen because you are saying different, different things. Listen to what faith is. Jesus with his own mouth, he said, man shall not live by bread alone. Give it to me, Matthew 4.4. 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that, that does what? From where? From whose mouth? Man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Did you hear that? So what is faith? Living by every word that comes from the mouth of who? God. What does it mean? Believing every word that comes from the mouth of Jesus Christ. Is it not? That is what is called faith. Example. Jesus Christ took Peter's boat to preach. And then after preaching, he now said to Peter... Let out your net. For what? Who said? What did Peter do? After all his arguments, he cast out the net. What happened? That is called faith. I'll tell you another one. Peter saw Jesus Christ walking on the water and he was afraid. And Jesus said, be not afraid, I am the one. And Peter said, Lord, if you know you are the one, bid me come. And what did Jesus say? And then what did Peter do? Why did Peter step out? Because Jesus said what? Come. If he did not tell you to come and you come, what will happen? You can't stand, see, you cannot stand on the word of God and you go down. 
it is not i don't know how what what you can never it has never happened and will never happen you can't stand on the word of god and you go down it's a lie the reason why people go down is because they are not standing on the word of God. I know what people read in the Bible and they use it to pray and all that and say, God, God didn't say. Why did Mary took him? Power from on high will overshadow you and you shall conceive and bear forth a son and his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people. And what did Mary say? Be it unto me according to who? Did it happen? In the case of Peter, did it happen? Did he walk on water? Was there a catch of fish? Even when Jesus rose from the dead, Peter went back to fishing. And he asked them again when he came. He said, uh, boys, do you have any catch? He said, no. He said, let out your net for a catch. And they threw the net. Was there a catch? <laughs> what if you throw the net and when he didn't say throw the net and you throw the net inside the water, what will happen? You'll be neither here nor there. That's what is called faith. Scriptural faith. Every other, every other one is subjective. I'll give you another one. When God said to Abraham, <clears throat> Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, leave your father, your mother, your father, your kindred, and all of that to a land where I will, and then in this shall all the families of the earth shall be blessed, and all of that. What did the Bible say concerning Abraham? Abraham believed God. Did Abraham become a father of many nations? Give me Romans chapter 4, verse 17. You see the same thing play out. Every I can go on and on and on and on and read and show you examples everywhere. Because many things we call faith is not faith. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called it that be not as though they were. Verse 18, first please. Who against hope believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Have you seen it? Verse 19, 20. Okay, 19, he said, And being not weak in faith, he considered not the, his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years, neither yet deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was what? He staggered not. Why was he strong in faith? Because God said, you are going to have a son of your own from your loin, from your own loins. You will have a child. And you are going to be a father, and not just a father, a father of many nations. The Bible says Abraham believed. Verse 21. And be fully persuaded that he had what? That what he had done what? Promise. Did God promise him? So what did he do? He believed the promise of God. He was able to also perform, verse 22. And therefore, it was imputed to him for what? What is it? Anytime you believe what God says, it makes you righteous. That's how righteousness comes. Believe what God says. That's how to live a righteous life. Believe what God says. You are righteous and then you live a life of righteousness, bringing fruits of righteousness. Fruits of righteousness, according to Philippians chapter um, uh, 1 verse 11, he's talking about fruits of righteousness, which is by Jesus. Now, what he's talking about is that anything that Jesus said, do it. That's how to live a righteous life. But there is a command there. Hello? There is what? And what is that command? What? This is another place where you make mistake about faith. Give me 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. I want you to listen very carefully. While we look not at what? The things which are but are the things which are not for the things which are seen are what? But the things which are not seen are what? Watch. When God, when Jesus said to Peter, come and he step out on the waters. Was he walking on the waters? Hmm? He was looking at Jesus. Then, what happened? The storm came. Eh? He turned his eyes away from and started looking at What happens? That's what happens to you and I. When you pray based on God's word, you believe it is done. Then Satan comes and throws the stone. Hmm? He threw, he will definitely throw it. He must, if he doesn't throw it, then he's no more Satan. He will throw the storm. Then what do you do? <clears throat> you leave because he said the things which are not seen are eternal. What are those things that are not seen? the promises of God, the word of God, they are spiritual. Jesus said, the word that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit. That, do you see it with your eyes? So look unto that which you cannot see with your eyes, which is the word of God. Stay on the word of God. Do not look at the troubles, the storm, the Satan is raising. As long as you take your eyes away and begin to look at it, you will fall. That's why we read about, that, about Abraham. He said he staggered not in unbelief because of uh, the deadness of Sarah's womb. Sarah was 75. And God said you are going to bear a child at 75. Do you know what you are going to start doing? You know what you will be doing every night? You'll be turning around on the bed. How will this be possible? Hey, Sarah, hey, he can't even, even me, sir. The Bible says Abraham, he, need, he did not consider the weakness, the weakness of his body. The man was getting to 100. The wife was 25, 75. The Bible says he wasn't bothered about, he wasn't looking at the woman. He wasn't looking at his body. He concentrated on the promise that God said because he come out of God's mouth. As rain cometh down to the earth and water the earth and then bring it forth. But give it to me, Isaiah 55 11. Lapia So shall my give me verse 10. Verse 10, please. For as the rain cometh down and snow from heaven. But do not return back. It doesn't return, but water the earth and make it what bring forth and board. Have you ever seen rain fall? And then the rain falls on the on the land where you planted, and when it was planted uh, falling down, and then the rain decided, no, I changed my mind. And he goes up again. He doesn't fall on the ground again. Even the one that fell on the ground, he collects it back again. And have you ever seen it happen? He's, he's using this to show you how the word of God works. He said, for as the rain cometh down and snow from heaven and returneth it, returneth not tita, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and board, that he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Verse 11. He says, so shall my word 
be that those words go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But what? But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing well to I sent it. Why don't you speak God's word all the time? Why? Thou shalt say unto the righteous, it is well with your soul. And so you say it. Let the weak say, I am strong. And let the poor say, I am rich. And when they say there is a casting down, it is not my portion. I am not part of them. There is a lifting for me. And when you say it, hello, you step out of the gate. Dust, trouble. By the time you get home, your loads are being thrown out because you are, the landlord has, the time he gave you has expired. And that you have stayed here, decreed and quoted the word of God and said everything and did everything. And by the time you get home, you see your loads outside. You are looking at the dust. He said his word will never fall to the ground. Fight the good fight of faith. Stay on the word of God. I don't know how he's going to, but don't ask me how is he going to do because I don't know. But what I know is that he will do it. How he's going to do it, I don't know. When he's going to do it, I don't know. But at the end of the day, I will come out victorious. Stand on what God has said. His word will never go down. My covenant will I not break, nor will I alter the things that have gone out of my mouth. When you do that, you can be rest assured. You will enter, you will enjoy your inheritance in anything that is good. Every good gift and perfect gift, they come from heaven, from the Father of light. Believe it in your heart. Say it. Stand on it. No matter what the dust is saying, no matter what the people are, whose reports will you believe? The one the doctor said, <clears throat> do you know why you go, you are sick, you go to the hospital, the, the doctor said, this one happened, and they magnify the cancer, magnify everything and all of that. You know, when they finish, you know what you do? You go home, your mind is fixated at what the doctor said. And that is your fate cut off. Doubt comes. Then James chapter 1 verse 6 comes alive. In James chapter 1 verse 6, it will behold you. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive some things of the Lord. You will not receive what? But he's praying. You know unbelief praise. How many of you know that unbelief praise? How many of you? We pray prayer of unbelief almost all the time. What you are even saying, you don't even believe it. Oh, 
Okay, let me ask you a question. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit is living inside you? Do you know the Holy Spirit that is living inside you? Oh, but that Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that resurrection power, is that resurrection, the power of his, that, one, that is the one that is inside you. What have you done with it? What have you done? Nothing. Nothing. It's just there. Now, nah, Banchala, Holy Ghost, now nah, Banchala inside you. The Holy Spirit is getting rotten inside you because he's in, there is what they call disuse atrophy in, 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 <clears throat> in anatomy. Don't, don't mind. Disuse atrophy is that when you don't use part of your body, either your leg or your hand, as a result of sickness or as a result of something that happened, and so you can't move your body, you can't use it for a long time, that body, that particular part of the body will start shrinking. It will start getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. It atrophies. That is, it gets smaller than normal. So you can't use it again. Why? Because it has not been used for a long time. That's what the Holy Ghost is suffering inside of us. If the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he <laughs> say, if that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside you, he say, him that raised him from the dead will also with him quicken your mortal body. You know what it means? Go and do a study on it. It will amaze you. You will carry you. If you actually sit down and read about it and find that God opens your eyes, you will see an immense one of your inheritance in this life and in the life to come is the Holy Ghost. It's a down payment. You use it here now and in the time to come. But we are doing nothing with it. Absolutely nothing. I want to challenge anybody. If it is not true, come and tell me. I will resign from being a true. You see, you say you are struggling with prayer. I don't like that. I pray for me so that I will. Hey, hey, hey. The, some of us, we need that seed to wash our brain, to remove all this doubt and fear and unbelief. Because I don't know how else to use it. I don't know what else. Pray. The Bible, that's why asking God to give you what he has already given you. If the spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside, is he living inside you? He said he that raised him up will also with him quicken your mortal body. So one of the things is that if you want to pray, for example, you can't pray without him. You cannot. It will be a struggle. You pray for five minutes, you are tired. You pray for three minutes. You want to pray for 20 minutes. After you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and prayed again. And then you look at your watch. You have just done two minutes. <laughs> True or false?
you going to blame somebody for not getting up? After complaining about the person that fell you that, then you get up on your... Jesus fell three times on the way to Golgotha. He got up. Nobody holds your destiny. You are the architect of your day. Your destiny is in your hand. It depends on what you do with it. Nobody can stop me. Nobody can hinder me. Nobody can rob me of my inheritance in Christ. Even if you feel that pastor doesn't like you, as the pastor doesn't like you doesn't add or remove anything. As long as God likes you. That's what you should become. The Bible says, look unto Jesus. It didn't say look unto your pastor. Look unto Jesus as the author and finisher of your faith. If you are genuinely looking unto Jesus Christ, you will look unto your pastor. If you want to please me, please God, because if you please God, definitely you will please me. Because anything that pleases God, it can be rest assured, I'll be happy with it. So your attention and all of that must concentrate on God, not men pleasers. That's one thing that I don't like from the beginning, even in where I was coming from. I've told you before, when they say meeting is by 7 o'clock in the if I come there, I will enter inside the hall. I will sit down. Once it is 7 o'clock, I will be seated there. I will not be hanging around and be talking about Jesus. And then what they do is that they will be hanging around. So when they see pastor coming and all of that, you see, wah, 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 bah, 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 bah. everybody was in a twinkle of an eye as if to say, you know this thing they do, I don't know whether it's a film trick or whatever. Everybody is Because pastor is coming in. But I don't do like that. But I will come and I will be seated. So with their eye service, when the pastor comes, everybody, they will just stand up <laughs> to welcome pastor. And they straighten up. Me, I will be calm. I will be quiet. I will be seated. Stop eye service. There is someone that is watching you. There is someone that is observing every single thing that you, your life and everything begins and ends in the kingdom. Remember you are in the kingdom of God. You are not in the kingdom of the world. Remember you have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of our dear Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that you don't in, you are in a new kingdom with a new life with everything. There is nothing that you need. That you need to borrow from outside. No, everything is self-sufficient. In you know, God is self-sufficient. He maketh you lie down on green pasture. You need a shoe, is you find it in the a new, brand new shoe, you'll find it. You need a wife, you'll find it there. You need a husband, you'll find it there. You need a car, you find it. You, whatever it is that you need, you need a job, you get it there. Everything. You don't need to go out there. Neither do you need to carry anything into the kingdom. And when you believe this, put it in your heart, and you say it, and you do it, it's a function of time. The difference will be clear. Without any apology to seven up. Shall we stand to our feet? Time will not permit me. I would have told you about your inheritance in the life to come. But what do you need for that inheritance in the life to come? To keep it aglow is your hope. Believe in hope. For hope make it not ashamed. Because the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. But anyway, what we need to do now is, is just a simple prayer. I want you to close your eyes. Think about what you have heard. Ask God to help you. It is one thing for you to hear. It is another thing for you to understand it. And then yet another thing for you to do. To be the doer. Believe in the word of God. Believe in the word of God. 
believe it. As long as it is written in the word of, if it is not written, they can be arguing that. But once it is written, once you have confirmed it, please, what you need to be asking God to give you the grace, help me Lord to adjust to this. Remember on my own, I cannot do it. You don't need to know anybody. The person that you need to know is Jesus Christ. You need to know the word of God. Paul said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Jesus said, this is life eternal. To know God and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. You don't, know, you don't need to know the governor. You don't need to know nobody but nobody. Who you need to know is God. Know Jesus. Have one-on-one -on -one with him. I want you to talk to him. I've heard your word today. I believe it in my heart, Lord. I'm asking you for help. Help me. Help me to break away from all this. One step forward and back, two step backwards. Bring me to the place of obedience. A place of truth. A place of understanding. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name. Our Father in heaven, I thank you because the entrance of your word gives light. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our heart. As we have heard you, Lord, today, feed us today with our daily bread that will sustain us. We are asking, Lord God in heaven, in the name of Jesus. Remember, you say, without you, we can do nothing. The race is not to the sweet bread, it's not to the wise. The skill is not to the favored. He said, because time and chance happened to them all. Help us, Lord. Help us. We look up to you today, my Father. Jesus, you say, without you we can do nothing. And by strength shall no man prevail. It's not of him that runneth, of him that will, but of you that showeth mercy. We turn to you, Lord, O oh, our merciful Father. Remember your mercies endure forever. In ways and manners that we have failed, that we have erred over time, may the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of the everlasting covenant, may it wash and cleanse and sanctify everyone in this place today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, breathe upon us again a fresh bread, a bread of faith, a bread of obedience, a bread of understanding and knowledge of you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Create in us the hunger, the passion that we might delight in you and delight in your word and delight in obedience to your commandments in the name of Jesus. We are not unaware about the plans of the devil to throw up dust and confusion and bring up challenges in order to distract us. But we remain steadfast. We shall remain steadfast in your world, just like Abraham did. We will not consider the circumstances around us. We will not consider the storms that the enemy is bringing across our way. Our eyes and our attention will be focused on Jehovah, the God that made the heavens and the earth, the one that opens the door and no one can close, and the one that closes and no one can open it. Unto him we stand or fall, Lord. But we know we are able to keep us and to save us and to preserve us till the end of the age. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we bless your inheritance today. We bless your inheritance today. We bless your inheritance today. In the mighty name of Jesus that everyone will enter into the inheritance that you have designed for us in this kingdom that we are in. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I see men and women who will do exploits from today. Men and women who will come back with rejoicing because of the great news that you have given to them, because of the breakthroughs, because of the things you have done through them and in them and with them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. From today, they will run and they will not grow weary. In the mighty name of Jesus, they will run and they will recover everything that the enemy has stolen from them, even their faith in the name of Jesus. They will be men who through faith subdue kingdoms, wrought righteousness, quench the violence of fire, stop them out of liars. In the mighty name of Jesus, women receive their dead back to life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. 
Glory be to your name. In Jesus. And amen. God bless you. Thank you.